What is going on, everyone? Anthony Cofrancesco from Data Dive, and this is the Quick Start Guide. Today, I'm going to be explaining the master keyword list, giving you a full rundown of this area of the tool, as well as some best practices. So the master keyword list is really a full view of all of the keywords that are driving sales for a niche. To give a quick tour around the master keyword list, I want to show you first this metric here. This is the percentage of search volume on page one. And what this is telling me is out of the 261 keywords that are in this niche, this seller is ranked on page one. That's within the top 45 positions for 99% of the keywords in this MKL. As I scroll down this list here, I can see all of the organic rankings for each of these keywords. And we have this color coding system where red is gonna mean high competition and green is going to be low competition or areas for improvement. If this is your product, you would like this number to be as high as possible, as close to 100% as possible. And you want your column to be all red, ideally all, all ones rather, completely down the row. Now let's talk about some of the best practices and how to work your way around this sheet. So one of the first things that you have to do before you can start analyzing the master keyword list is you have to clean it. So you have to remove any branded search terms and you have to remove any keywords that are not relevant to the product that you're trying to sell. So if I click on this B button on the left-hand side, this really just works as a V lookup that it's looking at the brand names here and it's identifying, let's see here, we've got unique, which is this Y-U-N-I-Q-E. We've got this, not gonna try to pronounce that brand name. So the B button has already identified eight branded search terms and I can remove those with that banner at the top. Now, you can also delete other keywords that are not relevant. So in this case, let's say I'm not selling a cat tree that has a scratching post. Then I could remove those 13 keywords related to scratching by clicking on this checkbox on the left-hand side, clicking on this banner here, and it would remove all 13 of those keywords. Some additional functionality inside of the tool is if I wanted to get rid of cat tree tower, which wouldn't really make sense in this example, but I could right click on a keyword and I could choose to exclude just that keyword in exact form, or I could exclude this keyword in phrase form, which would get rid of anything in my master keyword list that includes cat tree tower. So once we've cleaned up the master keyword list, then we can start to do a deeper analysis. Now, there's a lot that's going on in the master keyword list, and you can get some really interesting insights all here inside of the sheet. You can use this pin function on the left-hand side to put important values up at the top of your sheet. I like seeing the brand, the ASIN, the sales in terms of units sold, revenue, and then the search volume on page one. Everyone has their own preferences, so you can click on this button to reorder this list as you see fit. The other thing, and this is something that was just recently added, is we give you a breakdown of the, com of the competitors that have been included in this niche. So in order to illustrate this point a little bit more clearly, I'm gonna go over to the overview tab and show you what this breakdown means. So remember earlier when I was saying that the most important metric in my mind is the percentage of the master keyword list that a seller is ranked on page one for. If I want to dominate selling on Amazon, I want to be ranked as high as possible for the largest percentage of the MKL as possible. So anyone who's ranked for more than 80 plus percent of the MKL on page one is going to be red, very strong. Anyone who's ranked on page one for more than 60 plus percent on the, of the MKL is going to be orange, strong, weak is 40 plus percent, very weak is 20 plus percent. So already in this niche, I can see that the average search competition strength is 65%. And we have 13 sellers just in this niche that I've included that are ranked on page one for the MKL. We have another two that are ranked for 60 plus percent. So if we go back to the MKL, we can see a breakdown of those numbers here. 
13 very strong, two strong, one weak, six very weak. Very quick and easy to get those insights inside of the platform. I can also see the niche median for all of the competitors in this group, as well as a range. I can see the individual competitor performance here. One of the other things that I like to look at when I'm validating products and trying to get an idea of the competitive landscape is the seller's country. So you can see here that 12 of these sellers are based out of China, another nine are based out of the US, and then we have two that it says the seller country is Amazon. So what that means is that this is a first party seller. This is actually Amazon selling the products. A few more tips here before I move out of the master keyword list. You can see some things like review count. You can see the niche median. You can see the average star rating. You can see how long the listings have been around. Price point is also an interesting one to look at to see if the price compares, if it's below or above um, what's being sold as the average. The variation number is very helpful to see. You can see this seller has 23 variations of this cat tree. Right, we've got a lot of really good information here. I want to explain a few more things before we move out of the master keyword list. One of those is this search volume tab. When I get started, I like to filter so that my largest search volume keywords are up at the top. It lets me get an idea of what are the most important from a traffic standpoint. And then a, a column that we consistently get questions about is this column here for relevancy. So how DataDive calculates relevancy is it looks at all of the competitors that have been included in this niche, and it says how many, what percentage rather, of these competitors are ranked on page one for this keyword. So CatTree, for example, 70% of the sellers in this niche are going to be ranked within the top 45 positions for CatTree. If I filter so that my largest relevancy keywords are up at the top, these are keywords that are going to be more heavily incorporated across the niche versus lower relevancy keywords are keywords that not nearly as many sellers are using. So you can see this is cat houses for indoor cats. It's a little bit longer tail, but still dominating with 64,000 searches a month. So the master keyword list is going to show you one piece of all of the search traffic that exists for this niche. And where we're going to look to see a little bit more information is here in the Outliers tab. So in the Outliers tab, I'm going to filter so that my highest relevancy keywords are up at the top. These are going to be keywords that have less than 20% relevancy, but more than 450 searches a month. So outlier keywords are keywords that are typically going to be a little bit more generic, but sometimes these can be large search volume keywords that are highly relevant. So for example, cat scratching post, I can click on this button here to see, okay, there's a couple cat towers here, but there's also things that you put on your couch. There's proper cat scratching posts here. So it's not that this is the most relevant keyword, only 9% 9 rather of the competitors in this niche are ranked on, ranked on page one. Typically only one or two in the niche are gonna be in the top 45 positions, but this is a huge search volume keyword. So you can see here, cat, it doesn't get more general than that. This seller, not gonna try to pronounce the brand name, is ranked in position two, and it's 372,000 search volume. So my recommendation with outlier keywords is first focus on getting indexed for the keywords in your master keyword list. When you get into the higher ranges, like this seller here is already indexed for 100% of the keywords, almost 100% of the keywords in the master keyword list, then you can start to look and say, okay, I'm already dominating the most relevant, the most important search terms. Maybe now I can start focusing on other keywords like scratching post, cat, cat accessories, or some of the other keywords you might find in outliers. You can also see that outlier keywords can often play a large role in the overall sales of a product. You're gonna notice here that this product is selling more than half a million dollars a month. And you can see that they're indexed for 3.2 million search volume on the master keyword list. But if I look down here at their outlier search volume, they're also indexed for an additional 1.7 million searches a month just in outlier keywords. If I compare that to other sellers in this niche, I can see this seller is only indexed for 102,000. 
And if I go even further to the right, this seller is only indexed for 12,000 searches a month in outlier keywords. So if this seller wanted to start, and this is actually a variation of the other listing it looks like, or another version, but if these sellers over here wanted to start to pick up additional sales, they could start to focus. They're already doing a great job on the master keyword list. They could start to focus on those high search volume keywords that are a little bit more broad. So if I see an outlier keyword that I'm thinking, hey, I'd like to add this back into the master keyword list, I can just click on the checkbox here, click on this banner, and now it's going to move this keyword from outliers into my master keyword list. Now, residue keywords are a little bit different. These are keywords that are going to have typically high relevancy, but they're going to have lower search volume. So you can see in this case, all of these keywords have less than 450 searches a month, but they're highly relevant. So these could be things like the misspelling of cat tower, another misspelling of cat tower, longer tail keywords like cat tower for extra large cats, very specific. And so as an aggregate, these might be valuable. You're going to see that there's a lot more residue keywords. In the Roots tab, this is going to give you a breakdown of the most important and the largest search volume by aggregate keyword roots for the niche. And this is really the whole basis of how Data Dive works. So to make a quick point here, cat tree is not only important for the keywords cat and tree. Cat tree is a root which includes 131 other keywords with a broad search volume of 2.2 million. So when I'm writing my listing, cat tree is important, not just for these two keywords, but if I write this into my listing, I'm going to get credit for 131 different keywords. If I add on another root, which is cat tower, you're going to see just from these three words, cat tree and tower, total of three, just from writing these three keywords into my listing or really four keywords into my listing, I'm going to be able to improve my rank and get indexed for a total of 177 keywords. So practically, how I use the Roots tab is I'm typically looking at the master keyword list. In one of the earlier FAQ videos, I was kind of hypothesizing that or creating a scenario where this was my product. I believe it was this one here. And I'm going to put the largest search volume keywords at the top. I saw that there was a gap for large. And you can see that for this product, there's a lot of keywords related to large that my indexing is either very low or I'm indexed out of the top 101 positions. Anytime you see it's blank and there's no number, it means that you're not indexed within the top 101 positions for this keyword. So one of the things that I can do is I can go back over into the Roots tab and say, what is the closest, most relevant root that's including large? So I'm going to go over to the Roots tab. I'm going to type in large. And I can see cat tree large cat, cat tree large. And if I had a gap in my master keyword list, I could rewrite my listing to just add in cat tree large cat, and I would I might, I might still have these other ones selected here. Let me get rid of this. Let me deselect these just so you can see it from a visual perspective. Right, Just from adding in cat tree large cat, I'm going to improve my rank for 13 related keywords here if I was missing these keywords in my listing. So I like being able to look at roots as a way to really break down what are the primary ways, what are the clusters of keywords that I should be reinforcing in my listing and through PPC campaigns. The normalizer tab is really for if you have extra keywords that you want to bring in. These could be Google keywords. It could be other keywords that aren't found. This is more for PPC campaigns. You can drop in a list of keywords and their, their related search volume, and it'll normalize these keywords, remove any plurals, make them all into normalized keywords. I'm going to wrap up here in the quick start guide video with the overview tab. This really gives you a high level overview of everything going on in this niche. So what I really love using the overview tab is I get on a lot of calls and I'm at conferences with different data dive users, different perspective data dive users. And I can really quick in just a few minutes, give a great analysis and get an idea of what's going on with the niche. So I can look here and see 
metrics like what's the total revenue. I can see distribution of median revenue. I can see what the reviews look like. I can see, again, the country breakdown of where different sellers are selling from. This is the area that I like the most, the average competition strength for the niche, this one being 65%. 13 sellers, very strong. Another two that are strong. I can see the distribution of keyword searches. So I can already see for this niche, vast majority of searches are coming down to Cat Tree, with Cat Tower being in second, but almost a third of what Cat Tree is, and then a very quick drop off after that. I can also see stats like quarterly median and see that this product is pretty much sold year round, with the biggest month being Q4. Everyone wanting to buy their cat a holiday present, as well as Google. Uh, search volume trends and Amazon search volume trends. So that's where I'm going to wrap up right now. I think that was a pretty thorough overview of the master keyword list, also known as your MKL. Be sure to check out the other videos in the Quick Start Guide playlist, and we'll see you in the next video.